ask you about the economy and as you pointed out that the fortune of ICICI Bank in a sense is linked to the fortunes of the Indian economy. While sentiment has changed, the mood is definitely a lot better, much more confident, but we're not really seeing that result into a pickup as far as credit offtake is concerned. Even if you look at your own corporate book, for instance, the kind of growth that you would have liked, uh, that perhaps is looking a bit cautious at this point in time. What's your own sense about how long it's going to take for the investment cycle to really turn around? So, I, uh, you know, I think, of course, the sentiment has changed and the mood is very positive. Uh, uh, in fact, even from the foreign investors who are very, very keenly and eagerly looking at India. Uh, it's not just the mood. I must say there are also some other, you know, on the ground changes that, mm. are, that are quite positive. Uh, the simpler environment approvals have actually started to come. Okay. So, you know, so one has seen that actually uh, coming in. Uh, some amount of, you know, movement of files, decision making has become faster. Mm. Now, I think we have uh, a great boon in the form of commodity prices easing. Uh, the current account, therefore, is, is clearly under control. Mm. Uh, and then you've seen that the rating agency's outlook has also turned more right. and more positive. Uh, but they're not talking an upgrade just yet. Yes, but the outlook has turned yeah. positive, yeah. Is, is what I said. And then, you know, you see some of the smaller steps, as I would say, uh, giving an indication towards labor laws. Mm. Uh, I think the entire uh, policy towards the construction sector and FTI there, the FTI and defense, I think all these are very concrete mm. steps. Uh, so, so directionally we seem to be moving entirely in the right direction. Uh, for new investments to come back, uh, what is really very critical is that the existing projects that are stuck need to start generating cash flows. Yeah. You know, so I think that is what we have to now see and mm. wait for mm. till coal is really available until gas is really available mm. and the power projects start producing cash flows are not going to get released uh, so the investments cycle will actually happen only after that so as i view it first we would see an increase in working capital demand right because as production starts going up and then only will you see uh, an increase in investment cycle. So at least another six to nine months away? Yes, I would think so? so. For the new projects, definitely, yes. Okay. And as far as growth is concerned and the growth rate is concerned, what are you working with over the next couple of years for the economy? Uh, well, uh, you know, I definitely think that the growth rates uh, should improve. Uh, and it, you know, it, it's actually very easy to say that they could improve by 1% yeah, a yeah. year, uh, you know, and still you get decent numbers. But frankly, I think it would all depend on how fast we act. Because if you, if you, you know, if I count at the tip of my fingers, I can count so many low-hanging fruits, mm. which can all add up one one percent of the GDP. So it all depends on how fast we move. You just take the existing twenty thousand megawatts of power capacity yes. and make it working. Mm. The production of power and its multiplier effect can add one percent to the GDP, as per my calculation. Yes. You take a large amount of these natural resources related companies that access to mines and therefore the production mm. and all that calculate that that can add another one percent mm. to the gdp mm. so in my view there is a lot of potential to add mm. we add that quickly we can add two percent in a year uh. we move a little slowly we can add one percent in a year uh, but clearly we are on the upward direction so eight percent eight percent plus over the next few years back to that kind of growth yes. rate yes I would think 8% in the next few years uh, is, if, is if all of this falls into yes, place. Absolutely. Uh, let me now ask you about the other issue which has of course uh, uh, been giving the government as well as the Reserve Bank and bankers like yourself uh, cause for concern and that is the NPL issue. And let's just look at the quarter gone by as far as ICICI Bank is concerned because most, uh, more than half of your gross slippages has really come from the existing restructured pool of assets. Uh, is this a one-off you believe or are you likely to see more pain on account of this and has the problem in that sense as far as NPL in terms of new uh, creation of new NPLs is that likely to sort of stem at this point in time? Uh, I don't think the you know this is the end of additions to restructuring or additions to NPA uh, but I definitely believe that at least you know new additions to either restructuring or NPA uh, this year should be less than the new additions that happened last year. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's a little bit of a improvement on the curve, but it's not the end of additions to NPA. Uh, the other thing is that 
as you rightly pointed out, some of the addition to NPA is really the deterioration from restructuring to NPA. And this is because, you know, when uh, some of the companies were restructured maybe one year or two years earlier, uh, you know, we all made assumptions that the economy uh, we'll will up. recover mm. much faster mm. than what it has. Mm. And in the absence of that, uh, the companies have not been able to recover as per our assumptions and mm. they've turned into NPA. So, uh, you know, clearly this is an indication of two things. That is one, the recovery has been slower so far than what we expected. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, the fact that at least new creation of problems the rate of that is coming down. Mm. Uh, but, you know, how would you respond to analysts who say that this unanticipated or higher than anticipated uh, uh, NPLs that we actually saw coming in for you in uh, the quarter gone by is really the big risk as far as ICICI Bank is concerned? Uh, well, I think, you know, they have to look at uh, the entire portfolio and, and clearly uh, for them it's easy to estimate or may not be easy but it's possible to estimate uh, that there would be some slippages from restructure to NPA. Uh, as I would in fact put it is that this is really a lesser of a risk mm. than having new problems come up. Uh, so these are things that were anyway under watch. Yes, they were expected to improve uh, and it's not such a great thing that they have not improved and they are actually deteriorating mm. further. But these are not surprises in that sense, and mm. that is the difference. These are not surprises. These are not things that just cropped up as being bad suddenly. And even when you look at, therefore, impact on profits, uh, you know, even provisioning and all that anyway starts the moment the, uh, you know, the account is restructured. Mm. So, uh, you know, then you have some additional provisioning when it's NPA. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the answer to your question, therefore, is that these are actually not surprises. Uh, these are, of course, further deterioration uh, of problems that actually exist. And you feel fairly confident that new additions uh, are going to be significantly lower in comparison to what we've seen? New additions to, uh, yeah, the restructured and NPAs yeah. are going to be lower than last year. Mm. Uh, but this, this uh, uh, you know, some deterioration from restructure to, to NPA, NPA will that, still that continue. Will continue. Yeah, yeah, it's not a one-off. It, sure. will, it will happen. You would see it. Yeah. Swachh Bharat is the Prime Minister's pet project, or one of his pet projects, and you were out at Churchgate, uh, uh, you know, cleaning up Churchgate along with your team. Uh, is, this, is this going to be a sustained effort on the part of ICICI Bank and your team? And also, you know, a lot of companies like TCS have decided to put in money into uh, building toilets and so on and so forth. Are you going to take that route as well? Are you going to be one of the companies that pitches into the Swachh Bharat campaign from a monetary point of view as well? Well, uh, you know, uh, before I really actively started uh, uh, doing my bit for the Swachh Bharat campaign, I was thinking of how, uh, you know, I can make it sustainable mm. and meaningful, uh, you know, rather than a one-time effort. And therefore, when I, when I really kick-started it today from my end, uh, I have basically said that we really have a full one-year plan where every day, uh, you know, one branch of ICICI Bank will really clean the surroundings outside their own branch. So in that manner, every day you get one new branch involved, mm. uh, you've got actually this message and this consciousness spread all over India. And then of course, uh, I've chosen eight women. Eight Leading ladies, uh, yes. <laughs> so, Arundhati Bhattacharya of State Bank of India makes it to the list. Anu Aga of Thermax is on that list. Vidya Balan is on the list. Who are the others who are on the list? Uh, Anamika Khanna is on the list. Okay. Uh, Chitra Ramakrishnan is on the of list. Of the NSP yeah. on the list. Okay. Swati Piramal is on the list. Hmm. Rama Bijapurkar is on the list. Kritika Reddy is on the list. So, you know, you have banking, you have IT, you have designing, you have, uh, you know, um, art, you have uh, health and medical, you have, you have leading ladies across our diverse fields in India and our Chanda Kuchar, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us and we wish you the very best of luck uh, with ICICI and your fortunes over the next 15 years. It's always been a pleasure having you on CNBC TV. Thank you and wish all of you the best as well.